his back. Um, you know, obviously I have to drive the knife through, but this is going to get in the way, so one of the first things I usually do is just lop this off. Which is just like, hey, what are you doing? All right. Okay. Next. <clears throat> I'm grab Mr. Fish. And uh, if you feel over here, you can actually feel where the bony ridge is. Right? Did you want to feel that? I got you. All right. So I'm going to go here. The DOS bony ridge. Like this. And actually come up under here. This, which of course, Mr. Fish doesn't like at all. Alright. And I'm going to start parting the back. Now, you'll notice there's a big knot here. So you actually have to go bump and then go around it. So I'm basically just parting the skin, really. Alright, so then I'm actually going to go back and... You'll notice that the blade is going to flex a little bit because I'm going to try to hug all of the bones. Okay. So, um, again, I'm going to flex the knife a little bit by pushing this way because I'm going to try to hug the bones, uh, which maximizes, of course, the amount of meat that you can retain. You understand putting this on YouTube is going to make me seem like some really cruel animal hitting critter because he's still alive. Especially when I make the title Cool Animal Abuser Mutilates Catfish. Yeah, that might seem good on so well. <laughs> I suppose we could probably have you take this guy and go club the hell out of it or something like that. So, uh, so then I'm going to use the blade like this and open up some of this meat off the back. Alright. Then Alright, now, a couple of things. One is, I'm going to try to hug this as tight as I can in the back. So again, these, this is the spine that I'm trying to hug. Alright, then you go up and over the spinal process, or spine, like this. Okay, so all right, so now that I've gotten this started. Um, I'm actually going to do the uh, start the other side while this is still here to support the spine, which keeps it straight. Because if not, you end up trying to do this with the spine unsupported, and I frankly find it easier to do it the other way. Okay. Now it's not to say you can't, but I mean this is just how I do it.
same thing. Trying to hug the spine as best I can to preserve as much meat. Alright, then I turn the blade a little bit, which allows me to cut here all the way down to the ribcage. <coughs> you okay? Uh -huh. Alright. So, here, mice. I hit the spine. Once you pop over the top of the spine, like this. Then the next thing I'm going to do, once I'm over the top of the spine, is I'm actually going to go under the spine like this and try to follow that curvature this way as best I can like that which maximize since the that's the way the spine curves that helps you maximize the amount of meat that you're retaining Now you can see we're starting to peel the meat away like this. Next we get to the crucial part, which is going over the ribs. Now a couple of things. One is um, I'm not going through the ribs, I'm actually going over the ribs. Uh, and then I'll come back underneath the ribs and actually remove the belly and that'll be a separate chunk of meat, which is makes this a little bit different than a traditional fish. Okay, so let's see. Let's do more here. All right, so in order for me to do this, I'm just going to reach in here, slice this so that I can start peeling this away from the ribcage. There we go. Alright, so you can't see it just yet, but here's the ribcage right there. Alright, and what I'm going to do is slide my knife along it to separate the meat, and then once I hit the edge here where the ribs actually meet the skin, I'm actually going to try to maximize so this way if I cut down then that actually will tell me a little pretty closely where the actual ribs are when I come back up underneath, underneath it which is the second part so So you'll see I'm starting to run into the rib bones here. That just tells me it's time to turn. Turn. All right. So this is the sort of end of the rib cage. And at that point, I should be able to just start separating it.
that with a let me wait. Okay, so same thing here. I'm gonna let the knife follow the rib cage so that I can start separating this meat out. Am I on your way here? Again, if you're running the knife against the, blade, uh, the bones and you flex it a little bit, you can see that it's hugging the bones pretty closely. Now you can skin those or not right now, doesn't really matter. Um, okay, because the cheeks are going to involve basically banging up against the, the head bones, I usually do them last because um, if I end up dulling my knife, I don't want to be, you know, using the rest of it dull. So, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip them over and we're going to do the belly. Need a hand? What's that? Need a hand? Nope. Weighs a lot less. Okay. So, um, in order to do this, there's a couple of things that I'm going to want to do. One is I have to separate, like, the top. I also have to separate the bottom, but you'll notice this is his or her um, anal pore, which is basically where they poop from. So, um, Underneath that is going to be the large intestine. The last thing I want to do is actually pierce that and have poopy stuff all over your meat. Okay, so I'm going to come up under here, um, you know, sort of like the armpit, like this. On both sides. <coughs> Alright, and then um, I'm going to sort of follow the, the bone which curves and it lands a little bit. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to, again, if I push, I can flex the blade a little bit. So now, just come back under here like this. Now, I've got a buddy of mine who's Vietnamese, and she and her mom used to love catfish heads because there's so much meat still on the catfish head, even though, like, most folks would consider, like, oh, you know, we're done. Nope, there's lots and lots of meat still left. Um, and she and her mom used to 
begged me for catfish heads, even though what I was giving them wasn't actually cabazons, not catfish, but hey. Alright, so, I'm going to start separating this. Alright, now, uh, this part back here by the anal fins actually has like a bony piece in it. So what I want to do is I want to come up under this bony piece, avoiding my fingers, and basically just sort of loosen that up. And again, without hitting the anal pore. Okay, so... Okay, so, now the next step um, is to come back up under the rib cage and separate the belly. So, um, I usually start in the back, like this. So you can see right here that there's a fair chunk of meat right in here. But if you get too close, you're going to run into the butt. So I actually will sacrifice some of the meat, like this, and most of the time I will make a much more um, acute cut than, I mean I'll lose some of the meat here, but I'll save some of the butt. Alright, then what I'm going to do is, if you'll notice, I have a fairly clear rib line here. I'm actually going to go up underneath and actually attempt to follow the ribs so that I'm separating the meat right along the ribs. Like this. All the way to the membrane and then separating. Okay, so This, then come back, and again you can hear like the the blade hitting the ribs. All right. And then the ribs actually stop here. So, oops, there we go. Alright, then I'm going to try to separate the meat by just cutting down to the membrane. Like this. Oops. Too much. Alright. Okay, so you'll notice here's the ribs. As much as possible, I've tried to follow them and not leave a whole lot of meat on that rib. Um, here's the swim bladder. This is a boy because these are the testes, which is where he would be producing sperm. He's not full of eggs, that kind of stuff. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. It looks like over here we've managed to puncture the gallbladder because this is not pretty and not particularly tasty either, but hey. Alright, so here...
my ribs. Let me see if I can get a better grip on this so I can get a better shot at those ribs because right now I'm making a mess. Alright, so here's the ribs. Much better. Now I can actually use the ribs as a guide. Alright, so this is not as pretty as the other side, but there we go. Okay, almost done. Is that part also boneless now? Yes. So, this is the belly. You'll notice that it is freaking huge. Um, if you look at, like, the size of the fillets, I mean, if you just take the fillets and throw the bellies away, you're wasting a huge chunk of meat. But, you'll also notice that this has this um, peritoneal membrane on it, which I will show you how to remove in just a minute. Okay. So again, I haven't done excuse me, I haven't done the cheeks yet. I'm gonna do them last. So right now this fish corpse is just gonna have to stay put. So, um, let's skin this. Um, do you know how to do conventional skinning? No. Okay. So conventional skinning, um, basically, this is the same thing except that it doesn't have scales on this side. But if you do skinning uh, on a conventional fillet, that means you don't have to bother scaling it. But the idea is essentially the same. That you're um, trying to hold the knife as tight as you can to the skin and that's yours. Yeah. If he wants it, he'll take it. Right. Okay. So um what you're gonna do is you're gonna work the knife back and forth, but you also want to have a little bit of pressure this way for two reasons. One is it helps hug the plane of the board, and the other one is if your fish is slightly curved, you can actually hug the curve of the the skin. Um, hopefully, if your fish is adequately limp, it will actually lay fairly flat. But, um, you use, like, I will choose, like, the skinniest end, usually. I try to grab it with my fingernails, because you're going to lose some of the meat here. But, by leaving yourself a little bit of meat here, you actually form the ability to grip. So, yeah, I lost that meat, but now I have the ability to hang on to something. And I'm going to try to follow that skin as best you can. So, the unfortunate part with catfish is that it's not just a single swoop and you're done. 
like it is with some other fish. You sort of have to cut and turn so that you're sort of keeping the meat away from the skin. Alright, and at this point I can probably just finish. So there is your fillet. Excellent. What's that? I said excellent. Yeah. Would you mind showing us how to do the membrane now? Um, do you want me to do the other? Let's move to the membrane in case we run out of video. Okay, so. Um, oh, somebody just rang behind me. Okay, so a couple things. One is you not only have to remove the membrane, but you also have to remove it from the skin. Now you can do it in either order, it doesn't really matter. Um, I usually remove it from the skin first, um, simply because that makes it, I don't know, that just makes sense to me. Okay, so like before, you can see me cutting down, I'm just trying to get an in so that I can start getting to the skin. And I will remove these belly pieces one at a time, like this. I don't believe we're in danger of running out of video, but just in case. Okay. I'm not a professional cameraman. So. Not like I'm a professional fish cutter either. All right. So, once that's done, you have this piece of meat. Um, what I usually will do is I'll pick like a corner, or sometimes I'll use this edge. Right now, because I have a nice corner over here, um, I'm probably going to do that and just move this way. Um, I've done it several different ways. But, what I'm going to do is essentially make a little cut here, like this so that I have something to hang on to that will help me sort of hang on to the membrane as I run the knife between the membrane and the meat. So, so I gave myself that little notch and it's sort of the same process that you do when you're taking it off the skin is that you lose a little bit here at this end but as long as you have a good sharp knife and you're trying to hug as uh, tightly as you can the contours of the cutting board, with a sharp knife, you should be able to get the, the membrane without losing too much meat. This one is there. That's more what I'm looking for. And your end result should look like this, which is a nice chunk of meat, no membrane, no skin, boneless. Um, you will notice that it has striations, which means that it has kind of a grain. Um, because of that, I mean, when you're cooking this, it's almost like cooking chicken-ish, um, because it has that 
sort of firmness of texture and the strength.